Brownlee walked off and forgot his. You're such a tosser. Walked off and forgot his first trekking my, poles. First my bow, then my sticks. That's right. He loses his bow and then he loses his trekking What's poles. What's next? He's he's if if he's like a three year old. I'm hunting with a three year old. <laughs> uh, he forgets everything. How's this wind feel? This is nice. It's not bad. Dude, it's colder than Dude, a witch's. This is not cold. It's a wee bit chilly, right? A right? wee bit chilly. Once you get I still Dude. got my vents open on my. It's cold vent. enough to freeze the balls off a of pool table. It's a pretty meadow out there. I know. During the rut, they run all over. Right. They're here and there. They're just. They're, you know, they move based on, who knows what. They could be here one day and they could be over the mountain on the other side okay. the next. There's so much food here. I thought there'd be so many of them. There's food everywhere. Look around. I mean, there's water holes everywhere. This isn't like, like right. Chad's like, <laughs> there was that little stream over there. Uh -huh. was, yeah, you find a stream like this in Utah and uh, they turn it into a, into a, uh, what, what do you say? An amusement park. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, the camera won't focus. Can't seem to. Is it too cold? The camera's too cold. <laughs> I think uh, the camera's like, I don't know if I can film such an ugly subject. <laughs> no. <laughs> it just doesn't have enough pixels for the beauty. That's what it is. <laughs> Chad's a freaking camo ninja. <laughs> You're pure ninja, Chad. Pure ninja. <laughs> That's right. So why didn't you kill that three by three on the on the first time we saw him? That was not ninja. You were not ninja that night. Well, you were. If you I see one, I'm running to it and killing it. You didn't do a sexy enough cow call. <laughs> so this time, do it sexy and Blame do it right. the call or not Dude, I should have. I should have. I should have really got down and dirty with that call. Ooh, baby, baby. I mean, that was an adolescent bull. <laughs> His hormones are raging. And you didn't even call him in. You yeah, should have just stuck it in. is my fault. <laughs> it is my fault. Next time I'm going to ninja him. That's right. Forget the calling. Yeah, dude. Like I said, do the old aggressive Anthony Spencer move. Well, yeah, it's better because I'll that be bull ahead turns of you his, or not. As soon as that bull looks the other way, sprint 10 yeah. yards, stop. That's what I'm doing. Sprint 10 yeah. yards, stop. Close that distance in like mm, about two minutes. I want to do it quicker. I'll be there in a minute 45, so you're buggered then if you could take two minutes. Yeah. Well, tonight, maybe tonight, there were elk that came right out into the field right, right about here. And, uh, in this meadow. There are a lot of ways to kill a bull elk. I love calling in a raging bull. There are few things more exciting than a close encounter with a screaming bull elk. And nothing makes me feel more like a predator than spot and stock hunting. But an often overlooked and in my opinion underappreciated method of killing a bull is to lie in wait. Understanding an animal's behavior to the point where I can predict its next move and lie in wait for my chance to strike is, to me, one of the most exciting ways to hunt an animal. I enjoy the silence, the stillness, the way the forest comes awake after it's forgotten that I am there. I can sit for hours like this. The past two evenings we have seen elk walk into this opening just before dark. The wind is good. I'm hoping these elk will repeat their pattern one last time and step into this opening and give Chad a 30 yard shot at a nice Oregon bull.
These deer came into the field 30 yards from Chad and I. We could hear them approaching the meadow through the dark timber for about 10 minutes before they appeared. We thought for sure they were the herd of elk we were after. A couple of minutes after they entered the meadow, they knew something wasn't right, but they weren't sure what. I don't think they winded us, but they certainly knew something wasn't right. You know, sometimes you hunt and you hunt and you hunt and you just don't kill anything. And I found that the best thing to do in that situation is to blame your friends. Great, Bowman. 